Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us uh, here in the room and uh, live online. My name is Oliver Kahn. I work for the World Economic Forum. Now, we're innovating this uh, special media briefing with the Deputy President, Cyril Ramaphosa. Unfortunately, the Deputy President is on his way, but we have this room uh, for a finite period, so we thought we'd, uh, we, we'd kind of reconfigure the, uh, the, the format somewhat and, and start with a question and answer session. I have three very high-ranking, excellent ministers here to take some questions and give some perspectives on the, uh, the South African experience here at the annual meeting, 2018. We hope the Deputy President will be along very, very shortly, along with um, his colleagues. So, to my immediate uh, left, Minister of Trade and Industry, Rob Davies. Uh, moving along uh, and, and missing out the space in the middle, of course, Minister in the Presidency, responsible for planning, monitoring and evaluation, Jeff Rodebe. Um, and then we have uh, Minister for Economic Development, Mr. Ibrahim Patel. So let's just, let's just have a, a Q&A session for a bit and, and we'll see what happens uh, in a few minutes. How about a show of hands? Why don't we take a, get, a, get a bit of an interest as he wants to ask any questions? Can I see some hands? Okay, Mr. Gentleman in the front row. We'll take three at a time. So we'll pass the microphone along. So take those three. Can you remind us, I know who you are, but remind us where you're from, sir, and your name for those of us that don't. Okay. Alec, alechogbiznews.com. Uh, really just an overall, well, two things, one, one general, one specific. Uh, from a general perspective, just the, the difference between this year and last year. You were all three here last year. And specific, uh, from a national government perspective, the crisis with water in the Cape. Okay, so it's water in the Cape, and year, one year to the next. Uh, passing along to the lady at the front row. Okay, thank you. I'm reporter with China's Taishin Media, and my question is regarding um, a Chinese company. Uh, South Africa comp uh, Parliament is investigating the tendering process of Transnet with CRRC, a Chinese railway corporation, about uh, kickback and the localization. Uh, I'm wondering what is uh, the latest progress, and is it influence um, Chinese investment in South Africa in any way? Thank you. Mom and gentlemen there in the second row, we'll do three at a time. So get your questions ready. Everybody else, you're next. Chris okay. Bishop, CNBC Africa. Simple question I have for you is, um, what do you think is going to be the greatest challenge? You said that you're going for policy certainty. You said you're going to deal with corruption. What else do you think you need to sort out to make sure that foreign investors keep coming back to South Africa? A good question to ask in the week that Goldman Sachs mentioned South Africa as the emerging market story of 2018. Where do you want to start? Who's over the difference between the difference a year makes? Who, who likes to take that question? Why didn't you start and remove this way? Well, I'm sure we'll all say something about that. Um, I, I think that what we are detecting this year is a, a, a much more optimistic view about South Africa than we had last year. Uh, and I think that the vision that has been uh, enunciated by the Deputy President of the Republic and the President of the ANC and the fact that we had a stable transition uh, and that there is now a strong commitment. And by the way, those of you that don't know, the terms of reference of the Commission uh, into State Capture and Corruption have now been published and uh, that process will begin. Uh, I think that uh, all of that uh, indicates that we are beginning to get on top of uh, some of our biggest challenges and that this is, um, I believe, and I've noticed uh, with all the uh, investors and significant business people that I've interacted with uh, in the course of the last few days, uh, they're all very welcoming of, of all of this. And I think that that is uh, creating a platform on which we can uh, build and uh, strengthen uh, our investment relations. So let me answer just uh, the other question uh, about, apart from dealing with the corruption, apart from uh, a greater policy, certainly, what else? I think that uh, over the years we've been trying, and uh, against uh, the headwinds of some of the issues that have not been adequately dealt with that I've just mentioned, uh, we've been trying to do a few things. One is to identify concretely investment opportunities in our country and then also to try to facilitate uh, the investment experience with the establishment of a one-stop shop uh, called Invest South Africa. In fact, this year we brought the, uh, the head of uh, Invest South Africa here as well. And the whole intention is that uh, many investors, foreign investors as well as domestic investors, they will respond to an identification of concrete opportunities. Uh, they will want to know what support programs we put in place. Uh, they will want to know <coughs> what the conditions and terms are in return for those. 
And I think where we've done this, and we've done it, uh, I think, reasonably well in some parts of our economy already, the, the motor industry sector, for example, uh, where the automotive production development program has created a considerable amount of certainty, which has uh, supported a large number of investments, uh, that has uh, had a positive response. Uh, and the one-stop shop is uh, physically, its offices, uh, you will see representatives, uh, representatives of a number of government departments that will take re uh, regulatory decisions, ranging from home affairs about immigration permits, the Department of Labor, uh, the uh, environmental affairs about environmental impact. All of those departments are represented. Even when they're not, they're contactable online. And the whole intention is to uh, allow an investor to come to a single one-stop shop and then to have an easy passageway. You know, we don't just say, well, go to this office, go to that office, go to the other office, but actually there's a coordinated and single channel uh, through. It's called investment facilitation. We've taken a concrete decision to do that, and I think it's been working, but uh, I think that now we've got a, 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 a better climate for, for some of that work uh, to move uh, further ahead. And then lastly, let me just say on the... Uh, on the question about the uh, the parliamentary inquiries, that it is the portfolio committee that uh, is uh, uh, dealing with the trade industry that's 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 operating that, and of course they have their own autonomy. Uh, it's not a, a government uh, process; it's a parliamentary process. But what they're looking into, it's not any particular country or any particular contract or tender. But what they're looking into is that we have uh, a number of policies around localization. Uh, and those policies, I think, in the past, even we can point to some successes, that we have had companies that have responded. Uh, and when there are contracts and tenders, they have come and invested in our country and they've established manufacturing capacity. But we have seen that where there are uh, contracts and tenders that have not been uh, the kind of contracts and tenders which have not passed muster in terms of uh, the, the criteria of good governance and, and, and lack of corruption. Not only have these, these tenders meant that uh, somebody's pocketed money they shouldn't have done uh, or that um, uh, you know, funds have gone astray and that kind of thing, bad enough as that is, uh, it's also meant very often that uh, tenders have been awarded not to local manufacturing, but they've been awarded to people who have preferred imports. We have a number of cases of that. That's what that inquiry is doing. And I think my own view of it has been for a long, long, long time, they must do the work, they must find, do whatever they find, uh, the chips must fall wherever they should be. Uh, we don't have direct line ro uh, responsibility over the state-owned companies concerned, but I think that we are uh, very supportive uh, of uh, greater consequence management for people that have uh, 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 not observed the rules, including because they undermine one of the very important policy tools uh, for industrialization in our country. To agree with my cabinet colleague that the major difference between this year and previous years, there's more confidence and hope and more coherence and cohesion within Team SA. I think that is driven largely about uh, the political developments that have happened since December 2017 and also even the questions that are being posed uh, today from investors and business people here in Davos are indicating that uh, there's more confidence in the ability of our government to ensure that we drive our national development plan as well as what uh, our Deputy President has highlighted since he arrived here, the issue of a social compact between government, business and other social partners to drive this uh, program going forward. What is the main challenge? I think uh, the statement uh, of our governing party, the ANC, that uh, was delivered by uh, the ANC President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa indicates the line of march, what we're going to be seeing in the next 12 months. The issue of jobs is on top of the agenda, not only of the governing party, but also is a priority of uh, the South African government. Issue of small and medium enterprises and infrastructure especially its maintenance because we spend a lot of money as a South African government in the past few years, but on the maintenance, there are major challenges, which explains why we're having some of the challenges of water in the Western Cape. But as a central government, we are totally committed, committed to working together with the Western Cape government and the Metro of Cape Town to ensure that uh, we do everything within our power to deal with the water crisis uh, there. 
Lastly, I would like to say as well that uh, the confidence uh, boosting measures that were started last year, I think they're beginning to bear fruit as is highlighted by the strong stance that uh, Minister Davis has also highlighted of dealing decisively with matters of uh, corruption as well as we've seen the action that has been taken by the National Prosecuting Authority even preserving the assets of those companies that are suspected of malfeasance. But what is more important, therefore, is to consolidate all these uh, measures going uh, forward. Well, I think my two colleagues have really said it all. Uh, really, just to, to underline, emphasize, we've seen a very positive mood among South African business. And investors in Davos have paid attention to that. They see a South African delegation that's come here that is buoyant, that's confident about uh, growth prospects for this year. And I'd uh, like to say that in our engagement with investors here, uh, it's clear to us that there's an appetite, there's a growing appetite uh, for them to either expand their operations in South Africa. We met with uh, some investors uh, this morning and they were very clear to us. They, they were waiting to see uh, whether uh, the outcomes of our political processes were consistent with their sense of sustainability. And some of them have said, look, we're ready now to expand our operations in South Africa. We see it as uh, a great base uh, for uh, our, uh, our markets in the rest uh, of the African continent. Uh, we're indicating we've got $25 billion US dollars ready and available uh, for infrastructure spending. Uh, and, and that provides investors uh, some degree of certainty that we're putting in place the physical and other platforms that they, that they need to be able to expand their businesses but also that that investment itself will stimulate uh, uh, opportunities uh, and partnerships. So I think all of our discussions this year, Alec, and I'm sure that in your engagement with, uh, with uh, uh, people here, you'd have seen the same. There's a positive, there's a sense that uh, we can do things, but that window is available and we have to utilize that window. And since you've come for Hamlet and the prince has just come in, uh, this is a good moment for me to... Um, uh, to end and uh, and really uh, hand back uh, uh, to uh, to you. Thank you very much. A very warm welcome to the Deputy President, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa. Very uh, very glad to be here for you to join us. Um, so I believe um, with time pressing as it is, and and, and unfortunately that is a, a reality here. Um, love a few more questions, perhaps the Deputy President, if he's caught his breath, would like to make some remarks, some brief remarks. <laughs> And I should also say, whilst you're catching your breath, very warm welcome to Minister of Finance, Mr. Malusi Gigaba, who will take a seat right at the end there. Please, you want me to say something? if you wish oh, to say anything, otherwise we can take no. questions. Well, I think we should take questions, and uh, all I'd like to say is that uh, I think we've had a, a, a very, very successful, if you like, pilgrimage as a South African delegation, what we call Team South Africa, to Davos, I think our, our journey here has uh, paid enormous dividends. I think we're going back home filled with a great deal of confidence, of the confidence that the international investing community has in us. They have demonstrated that uh, South Africa is still an important destination for investment. Uh, all the meetings that we have heard uh, we've had nothing negative that has been said about our country, and all what we've had has been encouragement. You're on the right course, keep going, and we applaud you for this new era that uh, has been unleashed in South Africa, and they're wishing us everything of the best, that we keep to course and uh, we follow through with uh, the changes, the reforms, and the determination that they have seen us uh, communicating the interventions that we are going to make. So we go back home also with uh, almost a back full of uh, investment commitments. Uh, many of the business leaders that I have met here have said we are buoyed by this uh, new mood 
in the country, and uh, we want to assure you, Pres Deputy President, or President of the ANC, that uh, we've got this project and that project and that project on the line. This is precisely what we've been hoping to hear uh, in terms of coming to our pilgrimage here to Davos, that we want to hear the investing world uh, coming to us and telling us that your, your, your message is clear, it is positive, it is forward-looking, and it is the type of message that we can have confidence in. You are going to correct uh, some of the missteps that you have had in the past, and we believe you and we think we are able to uh, reconnect with you and invest in your economy again. So I go back home a uh, very, very satisfied Deputy President of the Republic. Thank you, sir. Now, by my reckoning, we probably have to give this room back in five minutes, so let's try to get as many questions as we can. Uh, I've seen three people in the front row with their hands up. Four. Uh, sir, if you could just give us your question and, and pass it along, the microphone along. Thank you. Jan de Hinton, Bloomberg News. So how likely is it that plans to build new nuclear power plants in South Africa will now be taken off the table? Okay, nuclear plants off the table. A uh, lady in the, with the white hats there. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Minister Radevi. Just some feedback on the implementation of the National Development Plan, please. National Development Plan. Pass it along, please. Mr. Deputy President, I just want to get your reaction to the terms of reference for the state's inquiry being out today. Uh, and there's a gentleman in the back, yeah, second row there. Um, just some more details about your plans for growth and also, again, any comments you've got with regards to the state capture inquiry. Okay. So Deputy President, there was uh, the nuclear plant, the, uh, the terms of reference for state capture and plans for growth. Well, the, the nuclear plant really, I mean, we, we've got to look at where our economy is. We've got excess power right now, and we have no money to go for a major nuclear uh, uh, plant building. And all of this really needs to be looked at in context, in the current context that we are in. And if, for instance, you've got excess power and you ha don't have the money, and we have already said that this nuclear process will be looked at within the broad context, of affordability and uh, what we currently have. And this is how it needs to be looked at. And if in our discussions, as we proceed with discussions, we find that it doesn't in the end really make sense because we don't have money, uh, that is uh, the, the type of discussion that we will have. With regard to the terms of reference, I have not seen the terms of reference, I must uh, uh, say. I've heard that they've just come out, and I need time to look at them and to study them and to see the extent to which they are going to enable the Commission of Inquiry to do its work effectively. I know, for instance, that the Deputy Chief Justice uh, has, has been saying that he needs those terms of reference to be out so that he can start with the work. But I think the positive thing about all the state capture process is that one, we are now going to go to the depths of what uh, corruption has been taking place in our state-owned enterprises. I think that is a huge plus. Uh, two, we've got an independent judge who's going to look at all this. And three, uh, this process will go along in tandem with uh, the process that needs to be followed through by the criminal justice system of identifying those who have committed wrong and making sure that they are brought to book. So the two uh, should not be seen as uh, you know, excluding the other one. Uh, the two processes will go ahead because where wrong has been committed, it must be followed through, and those who are found to be responsible for that must be dealt with. Uh, the growth issue, uh, my colleagues can answer that. One of the things that has been impeding growth is one, corruption, two, what we've been doing uh, with our state-owned enterprises in terms of their dysfunctionality, uh, their weak balance sheets. Uh, once we address that, uh, we're going to find that investors will find our country attractive for investment. Uh, so investors will then come. 
Uh, we're open for investment. We're dealing with the regulatory framework in our country. And we're going to deal with all those issues that potential investors have raised. For instance, in the mining industry, the mining charter is now going to be thoroughly discussed with the key role players so that we find a solution that will unlock our mining industry so that South Africa can benefit from this uh, commodity boom. We do not want to miss out on this commodity boom that is unfolding. And the mining, if the mining charter is holding us back, then we must deal with it and find commonality of uh, purpose and views with uh, potential investors. The other ones, I think, um, another one was directed to you, Minister. Yeah, on the uh, implementation of the National Development Plan, as you know, since 2014, we started the first five-year program of implementing the National Development Plan with uh, 14 outcomes starting from education, health, uh, the economy, social cohesion, and nation building. So every quarter, we do make a presentation to government to see how far we've gone in implementing the NDP, as well as to identify obstacles that still stand in the way of doing that. We've just released a mid-term review of how far we've gone since 2014. And going forward, we need to accelerate uh, the implementation of this program. But we need to record as well that the success of the implementation of the NDP does not lie on government alone. It requires collaboration and partnership with the private sector, other organs of civil society, as well as labor. And the social compact that the Deputy President has been talking about has to be accelerated so that we jointly ensure the success uh, of the NDP. But we are very optimistic that uh, we are on track in terms of dealing with all the challenges. But we need to focus more, as it has been indicated in uh, the state of uh, in the uh, general aid statement that uh, the president of the ANC, uh, Deputy President Ramos Posa, indicated uh, uh, about two weeks ago of focusing on jobs, jobs, and jobs. Well, thank you very much. My colleagues are telling me, unfortunately, we do have to make this room available for the next uh, the next session. So uh, I hope that's giving you a good uh, good flavour, a good good picture of the activities of Team South Africa at this meeting, the priorities for year ahead. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us here on the panel as well. This session is now over.